Okay guys, in this video we're going to be talking about why every bushcrafter that really is worth their salt needs a good, expensive bushcrafting axe. So without any further ado guys, please don't forget to comment, like, share, and subscribe so you can see more awesome Alaskan content just like this. Okay guys, so in this video we are going to be talking about expensive bushcraft axes and most notably my GBA or Grand Forest Brooks Swedish Forest Axe. Now I've had this axe here for about seven years. I've had it since 2014. I've had it since 2013 and I have loved this axe every minute of using it, fielding it, carrying it, and all of the above. Just having this axe is awesome and I wanted to talk to you guys about why you should invest a lot of money into a high quality and expensive bushcrafting axe just like this. Now, what a lot of the points I'm going to make in this video aren't necessarily or specifically about just the GBA Scandi Forest Axe. You can certainly go for something like a Holtzbrook. You can certainly go for something like a Holtzbrook. I have a few of those as well, but um, just any really high quality axe maker that is doing a good job at putting out quality tools, whether it's GBA, Holtzbrook, or uh, many of the other different brands, even smaller brands off of Etsy or private shops do an excellent job. Places like Kathloff or something along those lines, their hatchets and axes are awesome. And there are plenty of places like Hoffman uh, does another, is another job or is another company that does a great job with axes. So let's jump into some of the reasons of why an expensive axe is at least a good idea. So the first one I have to say, and this one might be slightly arguable, is what I consider price disparagement, or essentially saying that, you know, looking at an axe like this, this axe costs about $180 to $200. And I see a lot of people, when they look at bushcrafting tools, and they look at a bushcrafting axe, and they see $180 or even $150, they think, wow, that axe is really expensive. But then they go and they buy a $150, $250, even $300 bushcrafting knife. And I have certainly bought expensive bushcrafting knives as well, but a lot of people are willing to go and buy a very expensive bushcrafting knife and then turn around and say, wow, you know, $200 for a bushcrafting axe, that is crazy or absurd. And uh, I just, I'm always slightly uh, caught off guard and left a little bit amazed by those comments because people will turn right around and buy very expensive bushcrafting knives and not really realize that, you know, they can buy or they don't really realize that, you know, that knife costs sometimes even more than a bushcrafting axe. And especially with bushcrafting over things like camping or backpacking, uh, in bushcraft you do build a lot of larger um, projects and axes come in very handy for those projects. And in fact, I've done several videos already talking about why you should buy an expensive axe and an expensive saw and go with something more you know, reasonably priced for a knife, at least to begin with. And that kind of leads me to the second point when it comes to expensive axes versus cheap axes. Now, some people, going back to knives for just a second, will say that, you know, you can feel the difference a lot in an expensive knife versus a cheap knife. And there are certain truths to that, and there are certain materials that expensive knives have over cheap knives. But by and large, if you get a quality and expensive knife or a quality expensive knife, uh, the fit, the feel, and most importantly, the functionality of that knife is going to be largely the same. Whereas when you get something like an expensive axe or a, versus a cheaper axe, there is going to be a very large difference in not only the build quality, but primarily the fit and the feel, the way that the axe fits in your hand in the way that it feels to swing that axe or hatchet will be different. And that is primarily noted in things like the handle. Something like GBA or companies like GBA spend a lot of time in engineering the ergonomics of their tools so that they feel comfortable for prolonged durations. So if you have to fell a tree and then buck that tree with an axe, it's going to be comfortable and you're not going to develop hot spots or blisters in your hands from using that axe. In addition, like I said, 
uh, with the quality, the build quality, is going to be substantially different. Cheaper axes will often, if they are especially made of wood handles, they will not be hung properly or they'll be hung on pieces of wood that have poor grain orientation. And this is just because that wood is cheaper and it's easier to poorly hang an axe. It takes time to properly fit an axe head to a handle. And so that is a process in and of itself. And of course, like I said, premium wood that is going to have the proper grain orientation is going to be more expensive. So on budget axes, such as Cold Steel's uh, Trail Boss and others, they don't have quality handles or even if they do have good grain orientation, they have very poor head fitment. And that's not just speculation. I too own a Cold Steel Trail Boss and I've done a review on it. And uh, it's not a bad axe, but once again, very poor fitment from head to handle. And that may be something you can resolve, but that's time you have to take and expense you have to take because you're going to have to replace that handle and rehang your axe. So all told, you're in it for you're in it for even more money than up front. So <clears throat> lastly, the other thing with cheap axes, once again, kind of referencing the Cold Steel Trail Boss, <clears throat> is the head. Uh, on a lot of expensive axes like these GBAs, the construction of the head is completely different. These tools are not only sharpened to a higher degree, they are also a different uh, style, or really there's less meat to this, to the faces of your axe. This means that when it comes to felling, and it comes to trimming or limbing, and it comes to bucking wood, you are going to have a much better axe. Now, in fairness, um, the cheaper or maybe more hefty uh, axes will do a better job at splitting. This axe does not do the best job. It certainly is an axe, and it certainly can split wood, but it does not do as good a job as something like a cheaper axe that has um, more meat on the faces of the uh, on the faces of the axe that split apart wood a little bit better. So I will give them credit in that regard. But the problem is that's more of an unintentional benefit, whereas it's not really a part of the design. So a lot of those components do lead into quality and of course durability. This, of course, being a seven-year-old axe, I've had like I said since 2013, it has seen a lot of mileage and a lot of use. And while it is not in perfect condition, it is definitely used, it has some rust on it and some patina, and the handle has certainly some chips in it and little nicks from where it has, you know, had some impacts. This axe is definitely built to a very high standard and even all these years still, it has absolutely no play in the head. The fit is spot on since day one and has not changed at all, even from missed strikes, even from you know the worst that can happen. So that is another testament to expensive axes. If you want to buy once, cry once, expensive axes are definitely that. Okay, so the next part is, and each company varies. Uh, GBA is definitely not the best, but there is a great deal of product support, especially companies like Council Tools back their products up wholeheartedly. And if you do have problems with an axe head, say the bit is just too brittle, it chips out, um, you know, unfavorable results, you know, the handle breaks, you have a company that stands behind that product, will take responsibility for any mishaps that happen with the axe if it's a flaw in the product. So the last two, once again, are going to be a little bit arbitrary if you're buying to own an axe, but pride of ownership is one that I think is often overlooked. You know, if you have something like a Cold Steel Trail Boss, it's cool, but, you know, having something like a GBA, and I don't so much mean that it's a my brand is better than your brand kind of thing, but when I pick this axe up, I can see that it's a handmade tool. And so with me, pride of ownership isn't so much about the brand image, but rather I'm able to look at this axe, see the little imperfections, see the hammer strike marks, see where this was hand sharpened, and see how this axe was actually made by hand. And to me, that has a level of pride of ownership, especially because I go out into the woods and I build things by hand with hand tools like this. So it's kind of a <clears throat> old school way of doing things and it's very much, 
you know, by hand or hand making things. And so it's very nice to have a handmade tool to go and do those things. And it has a certain level of pride of ownership or as some would say, a fizz factor that it really just makes you happy to hold a piece of heritage tool that is built like the old school tools are and is made by hand personally. You know, I mean, each GBA I mean, each GBA, and I can't say this once again for all companies, but, you know, each GBA is stamped with the initials of the person who makes, who made it, so it gives it that personal character, that touch. So when I say pride of ownership, that's what I really talk about. It's not so much, you know, trying to flex or show off a brand. Uh, it's really just being proud to own what you have. Expensive axes, the cool thing about expensive axes versus expensive knives, and it's not 100% across the line true, but by and large, axes tend to hold their value much better than knives do because there's so many knife companies, so much, so many materials, so many advancements in the building of knives that if you buy a knife right now, 10 years down the line, it might be worth what you bought it for it might be worth more, but by and large, with most tools or with most knives, 10 years down the line, that knife is going to be worth a lot less than what you paid for it. Now, like I said, there are exceptions. Things like the Bark River Knives Bushcrafter has held on to its value very well, though I have no intentions of selling my second one. But uh, there are certain knives that do break this rule, but by and large, most knives do lose their value over time much more rapidly than axes. I mean, this axe here, the GBA, you know, has only increased in value. Now granted, the use or the fact that this is a used tool probably kind of slightly uh, erodes that high price, but uh, b due to the rarity and due to the value that a lot of people see in things like the GBA Scandi Forest axes, you know, these go up in price over time and this has certainly not lost value or even just stayed at the same value it has gone up in price so if you are concerned about expensive axes one way maybe to uh, calm your nerves is to say that you know your axe will be worth more in the future than what you're paying what you pay for it now so if you ever did want to get out of the hobby and you know find a new hobby say in 10 years or in five years and you had that gba scandy forest axe Rest assured, you could at least sell it for what you paid for it, but you could probably also sell it for a little more. So anyways, guys, those have been the top reasons to why I think every bushcrafter should own an expensive axe. It is something that you will enjoy using, you will love having, and it really will give you the fizz to use it, to own it, and to carry it, and to have it in your collection, really. And that's been my experience seven years with the GBA, Grant, or the GBA uh, Scandi Forest Axe. And since I have added more GBAs to my uh, kind of inventory, if you will, because I enjoyed this GBA, I enjoy all of the Grand Forest Brooks axes I've ever used. And they're definitely a good investment in a good investment and also very helpful tools. Uh, I've certainly constructed a lot of projects with the GBA as my frontline axe, and this this little axe here has fell, felled dozens of trees, and it'll probably continue to fell a dozen more. So, anyways, that's all for now, guys. God bless, and I'm out.